All right, hey everybody, back with another news feed here for you. This one kicking off the new, we know Fed's uh, cut the rates a little bit here, which is going to help for mortgages, for auto loans, that kind of thing. What's it going to really do for the auto loans and when are we going to find out what it, or when are we going to see the impacts? It's going to be very small at first. They're saying basically it's going to be 2025 uh, before we see anything major happen to us. End of 2025 might even be into 2026 before we're seeing any significant dis distances here. But uh, And it's going to be small. Okay, They're only dropping it down. Where do they say in here? They said that uh, they are only dropping, uh, the, has predicted a 25 uh, point basis cut. Uh, this week, or base points as we call them, okay, 25 base points, but as some acknowledges, could even be as much as 50 base points that could materialize out of this kind of thing. We just don't know, and it's uh, the f uh, lower Fed fund rate to auto loan rates at consumer level is slightly delayed, adding that consumers would start likely start to reap the benefits from a rate cut in 2025 plus, meaning probably 2026. What's it, in reality, what's it going to do for you? Well, it says the analysts estimate for every 100 base points rate cut, the average car payment will come down $20. Well, if they're only dropping it 50 base points at most, what that basically means is you can expect 10 bucks less a month for your car loan is really what it's going to come into. Putting it in simple terms, because there's so many variables between what interest rate you get what they're going to do. But in a nutshell, this rate that everybody's all geeked up about and excited, uh, remember they've went up since 2022, they've went up 430 base points. Okay. That's insane amount. Well, now they're going to, we're, we're supposed to be all excited because they're going to cut 25 out of this, maybe 50 if we're lucky, but they've went up 430 points. So pretty nuts. You can figure you're going to save about $10 on average for your car loan. Not very impressive, not very good, kind of disappointing. This one here, speaking of disappointing, but a number of Tesla owners uh, that have cyber trucks are pissed. They want their, uh, they're, they're trying to sign a petition. They want their refundable $1,000 deposit back. They're non-refundable. They're, they're mad. Reason for it is, is because the new Foundation Series cyber truck is the one that's out now, and Tesla's telling them you're going to take this truck, but it's 20000 bucks more than a standard um, cyber truck is to get this foundation series truck, and they're pissed. They don't want to pay the extra twenty grand, so they're like, give me my, my $1,000 deposit back, and Tesla's saying, no, it's a non-refundable deposit. Now, when they, they reserve their spot, they only pay $250, okay, is what they do, and that is refundable. That is a refundable fee, but once you convert it to an actual purchase, or you're ready to purchase, where it says, where, here it says right here, once you convert it to your registration to, a, or your reservation to a binding order, you're putting down a non-refundable $1,000 deposit. That makes sense. I understand it, but these people are pissed because now that binding order is not on their $100,000 one. It's on the $120,000 one, and they're pissed, and they want out of it. Tesla plays so many weird games with this stuff. I just don't understand. I, it, but what fear, what I fear most about this model is this is the world that we're heading to is this type of buying. Okay, we already have the digital um, window stickers coming where dealers can pull this kind of crap all the time. If they want to charge you an extra 10 grand, they just change a digital window sticker and now it's 10 grand more. They can do whatever they want to with this stuff and it's pretty annoying. And some people say, well, no, they can't. That's set by the, you know, by the manufacturer. Well, they won't be MSRPs anymore. Not a window stickers. The window sticker will be the price that the dealer says. There's all kinds of ways they'll loophole around this stuff. But Tesla, Tesla's playing a lot of games all the time. I mean, you could buy a Tesla and then literally a month later, the thing be worth half the price. So somebody else could buy it brand new for half the price of what you paid. I'm not a fan of this system. Everybody's like, hey, well, we should all buy our cars like Tesla. I don't believe so. I think Tesla, the, Tesla is the biggest ticking time bomb when it comes to vehicle value, there is. I would never buy a Tesla strictly from the fact that you never know. It's a crapshoot if you're going to lose, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars just by owning it. So for me, not interested. This one I am interested in here. So we got Jeep coming out with a pretty cool technology. This is going to use LiDAR. 
and uh, that kind of stuff for sonar. But what it's technically going to do is it is a, a bunch of sensors under here that can actually see under the water. And it can tell you where the ruts are, and it can tell you where obstacles are, it can tell you the water depth, it can tell you all sorts of things that are in this, and uh, let you know what's actually going on under the water surface of the mud holes or the, the streams or creeks you're gonna be crossing. It can see all this. They're taking it even one step further. Okay, so after it knows what's going on under there, it actually um, and sees the depth of the water, the slope of the ground, any obstacles that may be hidden underneath the surface. This is all right here. Once it's done that, the patent suggests that you can actually hit a button and a vehicle can take control from the driver using the information from these underwater sensors to make self-determined adjustments to the steering wheel and throttle in real time, making it semi-automatic, partially autonomous system, basically like crawl control or hill descent control, but for underwater or for water fording, it can do all of this for you. Pretty interesting. You can see the sensors that detect using LiDAR um, they detect all the details of what's going on under the water. And if you want to, you'll be able to hit a button and it will actually navigate the right way through that stuff or tell you if it can't. Um, again, an on-off thing like a hill descent control or... Uh, crawl control is but for in the water pretty cool system and uh, they also have that burnout you know the advanced burnout mode is coming to that they put in that patent for also which we have right here which is pretty neat it's basically what it is is it's they call it burnout mode but it's basically to allow you just like the burnout pits at your drag races where the cars will pull into that bleach pit we used to call them and get in there and whoo, hit the front brakes and they, or hit the brakes and they just burn out and get those tires super sticky. They would then have that traction so when they go to race those tires are hot, melted basically and sticky and ready to grab for traction. Well, it's a burnout. Okay, so what it was, burnout pit. Well, Jeep is including a burnout mode, or they're going to. They got a patent going for this, and here's how it's going to work. But basically, all practical purposes, what it is, is it's a tire clean out and burnout mode. So when you're getting into the mud and stuff like that, you can use this burnout mode. It works for the front axles only, and uh, but it allow you to spin those tires really quick, boom, and clear all that mud out of there. Remember, the shape and design of mud tires are designed to fling heavy chunks of mud so that they can get back to the traction. If your tires are clogged up with mud, you don't get traction, okay? It becomes a slick. This burnout mode will let you clean those out. It will also let you, just like a burnout pit, heat up the tires so that you can use them for some big hill climbs. So if you're out in Moab or something like that, and you're going to go up a super sketchy uh, climb on a pretty vertical type climb out of there, before you go, you can actually burn out the tires to heat them up and get them super sticky and then start your climb with those hot, sticky tires working in your favor. So that's what burnout mode does. Pretty interesting. The scary part about this burnout mode, though, is that people are going to be doing this all over, like especially like Moab and places like that where it's all open country like that out there. Every other rock you pass <coughs> is going to have somebody's tire, you know, black tire rubber marks on it from them doing burnout modes. That's probably the biggest bummer of this, but you got burnout mode coming. And you got this underwater LiDAR system coming. These are pretty cool features. This one's pretty neat. Now, again, it's more tech, which sucks, but it is something that I like the fact that you can turn on or turn off. But it's like a crawl control for underwater is basically what it is. So cool things coming from Jeep on that aspect. If geared towards us is, is off-roaders and things that we're already finding ways to bypass and do anyway. Um, they're giving it to us as features. Kind of cool. So let me know your comments down below. Thanks for watching.